Hello everyone, welcome to Engineeric. Today we're going to be covering quite an interesting topic. Our today's uh, tutorial is going to be dedicated to making mesh with variable density. So before we start, I would like to remind you that if you have some particular topic you are interested in in Grasshopper or Rhinoceros, please let us know in comments if you would like us to make a tutorial about it. And also I'd like to remind you that we have a parametric design market on our website where you can buy, buy scripts, models for 3D printing, uh, some 3D models. We recently added quite a few of them to the market. By doing it, you support us and help us make more free tutorials for everyone available here on YouTube. Thank you for your attention and let's start. So when do we need this type of meshes? Meshes that have variable density, variable size of the polygons. Sometimes we just need it for purely aesthetical purposes, but sometimes we also need it for very practical reasons. Like, for example, we don't want to increase the resolution of the entire mesh. We want it to be locally low res, and locally high res. And in this case, we can make sure that we get the desired level of details wherever we need it. So I'm going to start building our base mesh with something like this. I might deform it a little bit just to make sure it looks it's not not too spherical looks a bit more um, interesting i would say let's try to scale it vertically let's hide this all right something like this and then i'm gonna populate the geometry with a few points let's say we start with 20 not too many and then i want to assign because this component that allows us to make the mesh with variable density, it actually takes into consideration the color of colors of the mesh. This component comes from kangaroo section of Grasshopper and it's called Remesh by Color. It's actually quite a remarkable one, quite a remarkable tool. I think it's quite, quite a nice one. Let's say we deconstruct our mesh before that we can actually get the vertices that we need. We we'll use pull point to get the distance from each vertex to the attractor points. And we're going to use these distances as a driver for the color coding of our mesh. I'm going to use this normalizer. I'm going to take the graph mapper so we can control our mesh a bit more, our mesh coloring a bit more precisely. Let's say we take the Bezier, maybe something like this will go. And then we take the bounds from the graph mapper so we can use it for the gradient. We say deconstruct domain to get the high, lowest and highest values. And then we take the gradient. I'm gonna actually I'm actually gonna use the very very simple gradient that black on white one, this one. So start goes to white and goes to black and the parameters from the graph mapper go to D to parameter. And then we say construct mesh and we reconstruct our mesh from what we had before. We take the vertices, we connect them to vertices and we take faces, we connect them to faces like this, right? You see what we're getting, right? We have our mesh with all the bright colors in the areas which are closer to the attractor points. I'm gonna increase a bit this the area of those parts. And then I want to connect this mesh to mesh input of the remesh by color component. This component is a bit tricky. First of all, it requires setting up the domain of those lengths. Let's say we want it to be from three to something like 12, maybe 2.5 to 12 just so that we have a bit more space to play with decimals. And then of course we need to say reset, we need to say the boolean toggle to false here. There we go. See, right now I think it's not... Yeah, this component requires a bit a bit of adjustment when you use it. I'm gonna connect some, I'm gonna give it some iterations and yeah, there we go. After four iterations, you see, we start getting this type of variable resolution. You see like some of the some of the polygons are very small, some of them are quite big, and this is our new mesh. Before we finish this tutorial, let me show you a couple of applications for those tools. Let's use the pull point again, but this time we're going to use this mesh as a base. So the new 
mesh with higher and lower locally higher and lo lower density you see like here is quite clear in when we see just the vertices of this mesh i'm going to use the vertices as points the original <laughs> original populate populating points as attractors and uh, yeah, we're going to use the another graph mapper, but this time it's going to be about moving these points. So <laughs> what we're going to get now, we're going to have very, very fine resolution at, in these areas with higher density and very coarse resolution where we have very small, very low density. Again, we're going to use the graph mapper. Maybe we set it up to something smoother again, just like we, like we did before. And then we use, but this time we need to use remap because we want to move these points by a certain distance. We take the bounds, we connect it here. We take the construct domain to move those points by a certain distance. Let's say starts at 12, maybe ends at something like 18 starts at zero, right? We don't move us all those points. Actually, I think it should be like this, but let's check. And then we move it. We use the amplitude to give it some, some value, to give it the normals we take from the original mesh. It's here. We connect it to move and we get the person kind of up here. This is basically what we're, what we're getting here, right? Mm -hmm. Actually, in fact, I was right the first time. Yes, I was right the first time. We're basically moving the points which are farther away from the attractors and we keep those areas which are closer to the attractors, keep them in place. And now I'm going to say construct mesh. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use these vertices as the vertices, the faces of the original mesh as faces, and the colors we don't really care about at this point. So what do we get? What are we getting here? Let's use a custom preview to check it out. Um, yeah, I think, I think this looks quite, quite okay for me. Mm -hmm. Uh, we can go for rendered mode. Some of these parts are a bit coarse still, but some of these parts are really smooth. I think it's like, it, it really takes some time to find out the right proportion the right shape but i think in general this principle is uh, pretty cool i think it's quite an interesting technique for example we can get something very like almost like gem shape or like a meteorite shape by the way guys if you like working with meshes and uh, find this this uh, technique somehow applicable you can also check the tutorial i made about the volcanic rocks uh you can see it on our channel it used quite a similar topology but Final part of our tutorial that I wanted to show you is actually turning it into something more designed. I'm going to use the dual graph component from Weaver Bird to get this. Yeah, to get this. <laughs> these uh, polygons. We're getting hexagons and actually not only hexagons, also pentagons and other n gons of uh, variable density here. I'm going to explode those curves gonna remove the duplicate lines mm -hmm. uh, remove duplicate lines mm -hmm. flatten it beforehand we're getting just the ones just the lines we need and then I'm gonna get the multi pipe and yeah for the multi pipe I'm gonna set the mm -hmm. the node size to 0 0.9 and the strut size is going to be 0 0.5. 0 0.5 in this case is not the absolute value, it's a ratio, so it's going to be around 0 0.45. This component is going to be quite heavy because, yeah, it takes some time, but I think right now it's it's okay. It's not, not that heavy com in comparison. And I think we're getting quite a nice geometry here. But then I want to turn it back into, into a mesh. The same mesh from sub D, <laughs> and we go with basic settings. Maybe maybe we can go with slightly higher resolution. Let's say something like this. Maybe <laughs> we're getting a bit finer finer mesh, and then let's give it some color. We say deconstruct mesh again. We take it like this. We say full point. 
we're always using these attractors to to get some some colors and some uh, some gradient, whatever we want. And I'm gonna take the very same points from the very beginning of this tutorial. Again, this component gets a bit heavy at this point, but it's fine. We're almost done. We also take the bounds from the distances. We take the deconstruct domain component, yeah. and we take the gradient. This gradient, again, I'm gonna take the black and white one. We take it from here. Okay. Start is gonna. The difference is that the start is gonna be black and the end is gonna be white. And yeah, these distances I'm connecting them here. And then I'm gonna use the component from Pufferfish plugin, which is called Twin Two Colors. And the first color is going to be coming from this gradient. The second color is going to be a swatch. And here we can actually color our mesh the way we want. I want to use something very bright orange, something like this. And then we say construct mesh. We use the original vertices. We use the original faces. And the only difference is that we're giving it a different color. We're giving it something like this, right? And of course, let's go to the render mode. There we go. You see, we're getting quite a nice, I think we're getting quite a nice uh, geometry here. I'm going to use custom preview just to represent the geometry without showing the edges. And I think, <laughs> I think it's a bit dark. So it's a bit not dark, but it's a bit desaturated. Maybe let's give it some. <laughs> first thing and then another thing is actually has to do something with with the colors not with mm -hmm. okay, you see we can get our mesh a lot brighter or we can get it a lot less bright but we can also change the factor we can change it to something like 0 0.80 and in this case mm -hmm. gets a lot more uh, saturated maybe I'm gonna go 0 0.67 mm -hmm. something like this so I hope you find this tutorial useful and I hope you have some space to use in your projects. Let me know what you think in comments. Also, if you would like us to make a tutorial about something else or if you'd like us to make more tutorials about mesh modeling, also let us know in the comments. Uh, thank you very much and see you soon. Bye everyone. <music>